Metal Podcast coming at you to, on a Saturday before Christmas. What's Christmas? We're not Christians, right? Anyway, so um, tonight is our 100th episode, too. 100 episodes of Death Metal Podcast over the years, which include interviews, just playing music. I don't know, a bunch of crazy stuff. Like, you know, we had horror movie ones, and we had, like, Halloween things. I mean, I, I would do one on horror soundtracks if we could, but it's called Death Metal Podcast, so I have to stick to, like, Death Metal. So tonight, we have a special guest. Um, so I'm good friends with this guest, too, uh, Jill um, from Funerous. Uh, she and I have go back pretty damn far because there was only, like, maybe, like, five Death Metalers that were invited inside her wedding. I saw ones outside afterwards, but I was one of the five. So I know that that basically we're definitely close peoples and it's been a long, you know, basically I've been a fan of Funerous basically since I first heard them, super heavy band. Uh, they, they always basically would go out and play multiple good ass shows. You know, they definitely left a huge mark on death metal and Jill herself left a mark on death metal because among, in my eyes, she was amongst some, one of the earlier female death metalers, which, you know, you know, uh, Sharon from Durkada and Jill were, and, um, you know, some of the girls from like Mythic and Demonic Christ, they were like the only female death metalers, basically. So there was no, there were not many female death metalers, you know, November Grief, maybe just like a couple bands, 13. So there was not many female death metalers in the early 90s. Not as many as there is nowadays, which I think is awesome, basically. And I think people like Jill paved the way to make more uh, ladies out there do their thing and be bands and play bass and get busy and sing even. So, you know, it's kind of cool and I feel very honored to have Jill with me. Um, so tonight, this is the Death Metal Podcast Funerous Edition. So I appreciate all the um, support from the chatters. What's up, everybody? The OGs. That's right. This is the OGs. You know, we go back to the old school. 100th episode. That's right. Like, I'm trying to... I gotta go global, you know? What's up, Leslie? How's it going? Cheers to um, Brazil? Or Chile? So, yeah, what's up, everybody? Merry Christmas? Yeah. What's up, brother? Thank you. Nice shirt. Definitely. Yule. <laughs> That's what I'm... Yeah, I'm more of a pagan, I think. I don't, I'm nothing. I'm not, none of those things. I'm, like, just a, a regular dude. Like, you know? I don't, um... I appreciate... Yeah, I love... I mean, I like doing this, and this is for the people, you know? This is, you know, I want... You know, this is exciting for me, too, because I get to ask questions to Jill that, like, you know, like, I don't even know the answer to, you know? So, what's up, everybody? Appreciate the support. What's up, JD? You're the man. Oh, okay, you're from Paraguay. Cool, awesome. What's up, Chris Herrera? Thanks for the texts earlier. John Lincoln from Ohio. Uh, uh, Jonathan Listen. I think that's your husband. Carla, Caillou, everybody, appreciate you. So we're going to go live and talk to Jill right now. She's backstage. She requested only green M&Ms, but we gave her the multi-pack anyway. So what's up, everybody? Here's Jill and um, on Death Metal Podcast. How's it going? Hi, Roy. How are you? I'm doing. I'm, 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 a, I'm good. Cool. So, yeah. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, you know, like I, in my mind, Funerous and like you being a female death metaler, you were one of the first ones to me. I have to say that, Jill, you know, like you might not say that, but like because you, you're you were younger than some of your other girlfriends. But basically, like you were amongst some of the first female death metalers there was to me, you know. So like, I understand. That's like, fun, basically, like someone I, said. I I I I know what you're saying, um, but I don't see it that way because there was innovators 
and the ones that I looked up to before me, um, of course, Wendy O. Williams. Not right. not that she's death metal or whatever, but right. no, no, no. Like pe people I'm like here her. Here she is. Um, Lori Bravo, uh, Corinne Van de Brandt, uh, you know, so yeah. many. Sharon, uh, Dana. Yeah, Mary. Sharon saying hi too. Hi, Jilly Bean. <laughs> Hi, Carla Sharon. saying hi Jill so yeah we um this is love and respect for Jill my my wife and I saw you crush the stage in San Antonio so yeah everyone uh what's up everybody what's up Evan what's going on Evan thanks Evan. for tuning in man so this is the interview this is the interview between Jill and Funerous so we're going to talk about Funerous and then we're going to play some videos and then, um, you know, uh, we're going to ask questions towards the end or, you know, in a little bit. So, yeah, cheers. Appreciate it. So, um, Jill, one question I did want to ask, like, since, you know, what, yeah, what was, like, what was the catalyst for you, like, getting into, like, metal, basically? Okay, so I'm going to have to be honest here, which is going to make me such a poser, but... <laughs> I grew up, you know, like everybody else did in life. Not everybody else. I mean, like non-metalers. Uh, hey, I was a Michael Jackson fan. I like uh, Culture Club. <laughs> I hear you. This is. I'm never hey, gonna no, you can't down. get hurt. But anyways, um, it was actually a uh, a girl that I met like pre-high school. Like, she was exposed to, like, Ozzy, Black Sabbath, um, you know, like, those beginning era bands, like, kind like, of thing early on. Like, doomy, deathy bands with death themes. Well. Ozzy was one of them, a, definitely. Black Sabbath. Yes, yes. But, like, okay, like. Van Judas, Halen. Judas Priest, Kiss, um, Maiden, like, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um. Her what, the, what do you feel like friends. the dividing line was for you? Were you like a thrash fan and then thrash turned into death metal? That type in the of scene? in the or in the very beginning? Yeah, yeah. No, it was more like like the bands like I was just saying like Culture Club. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm talking like after those that stage. Yeah, yeah. It started out with like you know, again like Sabbath and Maiden and. You know, ACDC, that, that kind of thing. And All right. Just, That's what we time... want to hear on here. ACDC. <laughs> I love ACDC. That's right. No one ever says Led Zeppelin. They're one of my favorites. I do like yeah, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I, I love Led Zeppelin. However, I, mean, I don't, I, I like, I understand the heaviness, but when people compare them, like, like as a metal band or something, I don't quite get that. Yeah. But, but yeah. It like, metal parts. So did Queen. Yeah. So oh, like I Queen. Love Queen. Queen had like metal parts. So it's yeah. like those were like those were like the good parts too, you know? Like it's yes. like, oh Queen. So yeah, everybody in the chat saying what's up, greetings. Uh Chilena. I think in um Czech Republic. It's the, the printing up, is too small up, for me to to see. Yeah, what's up, Brian uh Petricon? That's why I say it out loud. Hi Brian. Sure. So, yeah, Leslie, appreciate it. Raul, Morez, appreciate everybody that's tuning in tonight. So we're going to play a video, and then um, we're going to, uh, you know, we have to, um, we got to take it easy on Jill, you know? And then also, you know, Jill wanted to preface this a little bit, like, you know, her memory isn't, like, where she wants it to be uh, sometimes. So just if, you know, things, whatever, like, I don't think it's a big deal on here because no one's going <laughs> to. I may get confused at one point or two or three. No one's going to ask any $64,000 questions. So I appreciate you, Joel. Everyone that's tuning in, like, I, I, I put the Facebook Live on Jill's page as well. So maybe some of your friends are in here. I see uh, Jim Filippi. Um, that's Joel. my friend. My dear friend Jimmy. Yeah, Joel S. Gazara, um, Cardiac Arrest, Jelena, Wade Capode, appreciate you always, uh, Zulima, uh, Leslie, uh, 
uh, Iris. So, yeah, uh, Sharon's in here. So, very cool. Bill Manley, what's up, Bill? Um, Cheers, Michigan. So, we're going to play a song right now, and then we'll get back to talking about some old stuffs. Things are going to be a little out of order. I'm not going to play everything exactly in order, because I have no idea. <laughs> So that was the Obscene Extreme Fest, an uh, old video from uh, 2010, which I, I liked when you stop. I did like when you stopped, Jill, in the middle, and you're like, fucking, fucking <laughs> up. <laughs> I was, it, and you said something. Somebody called it out. You were like, fucking fuckers. Up. Oh, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, was like sick. I would always do something like really cheesy on stage, like every show, and not on purpose, just like maybe like ad <laughs> living kind of thing. So <laughs> that's a good one, though. Yeah. Obscene, you know. You're like, <laughs> you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Super yeah. funny. Yeah. Festering Earth, definitely. Yeah, really brutal. Unreal heaviness. Everyone's loved it. Loved the video. Definitely. So that was awesome. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Yeah. I, Obscene Extreme Fest basically is like a gathering of like freaks, basically. Yes. Like you go there, you know, like I camped outside there as a fan and like we bought a tent like me and Gutter Christ. Uh -huh. We went over there with a, on a bus trip with like 40 Germans singing beer songs and David Hasselhoff. 
And basically, uh, when we got to the fest, like, we tried to stay at the hotels. They were all booked. So, like, we're like, oh, I guess we just have to live at this fest, basically. Uh-huh. Which we did, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was a one-man tent. Exactly. You gotta remember. If, if I'm we gotta not take mistaken, turns. One thing that I remember so much about the fest, I mean, things, many, many, many things, but I... I believe that Obscene Extreme is the, um, like, the vegan uh, right. fest. And I remember eating, like, tofu there, and that was the first time I ever had it, and it wasn't that bad, really. I know. I but, agree. And yeah. I was enjoying also the vegan food at the fest because uh-huh. it was like we were, like, confined into this, like, death metal camp, basically. Like exactly. A, a weekend camp. And then, you know, we would hit that truck, and it would have, like, those, like, I don't know. They were like, they reminded me of like Zeppoli's uh, from Ita- Italy, but they were a vegan version or something. They were pretty okay. sick. And then they had like these little beer chips too. Okay. So like, I always remember that because instead of money, everyone had like these little tokens and they were like little, little beer chips. Yeah. So like er- all our beers were paid for with like these, like what with, with felt to me as like funny money. You know, <laughs> so I was like, "Here, take some funny money and buy everyone a beer here in the entire tent." You know, yeah, it was a weird pizza dough shit. Exactly, it was. Uh. It was good. It was definitely cool, man. Torsten uh, was the bus tour was great. Roy, fun times. NRWDM crew was in full power. Pumpa, rest in peace. Definitely, Torsten, Jan, and more. Yeah, Torsten sent a message, actually, because I, before the show started, uh, I hit up a few friends, Jill. Okay. So I want to play something that um, would be a, fr- a good old friend of yours. Oh, God, I'm scared. <laughs> Gosh, where do I even begin? Uh, so many good memories uh, over the years. Um, even though we haven't been in touch the last handful of years, there's a rich history here. Oh, I'm going to take it way back, back before you came, became the bass player of Funerous, uh, you know, to a time when things were much easier, simpler, fun, because we were a lot younger. Um, I know what Jason and I were just teens at the time, um, I want to say it was so the Cambria County Fair in Evansburg. I'm sure you remember. Um, you, I know you saw us two young death metal freaks um, around, you know, at shows, uh, and even probably at the fair before, because you know we'd go every year. Um, but we finally got up the courage to talk to you. <clears throat> at least I think we talked to you first. I'm not sure. A little hazy. Um, you know, pushing 50 here. So, uh, let's see. Um, you know, we'd always see you around with your cannibal corpse shirts and stuff, you know, top 40 death metal. (laughs) Remember that? Uh, but we just had to talk to you. Um, but I know after that first conversation, we had become fast friends and that is true. Um, I don't remember exactly when it went down, but we found out that you had, you know, played a little bit of guitar. Um, But once we found that out, I think it was an absolute no-brainer that we wanted you to play bass in Funerous. And turns out, you were the missing piece. Uh, After trying to work with so many um, folks who were either just total flake jobs and had a totally different idea about, you know, what metal it was or whatever or they just didn't like us you know we were just fucking teeny boppers you know with our you know wannabe sewer death metal band um you know practicing in my parents garage uh so i don't think that was for a lot of people um but lo and behold you come along and the juice extractor bass came to be um yeah, the rest is history. Uh, but those I just, those jam sessions in Jason's room are memories that I cherish to this day, even if he and I often butted heads, which I'm sure you recall. 
uh, you know, some difficult times there. Uh, but you were good at keeping us from veering too far into disaster. And, you know, you even fit in with our goofy sense of humor um, and added to it. I won't get into some of that stuff. Some of our the little songs that we would make in that room that are probably on a tape somewhere um, that I won't really play for anybody. That's that's for us. <laughs> but um, yeah, if I could go back, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, I'm sure there are a lot of other good stories and good times, like our brief tour in Mexico. You know, the fest we played in Italy, those were all really awesome and fun, and I have good stories about those. Um, you know, the drunken hallway at the, uh, you know, at the via that we stayed in in Italy, that was some funny ass shit. Um, but, uh, you know, nothing compares to the early days. Um, and while I'm obviously bummed to be sharing this memory under the current context of things, I'm not at all bummed to have shared funerals with you in the times that we had. That's simple. That's, you know, that's no bullshit. Um, love you, Jill. All right, let me shut this photo off now. Sorry. So that was Brad, who was an early, like you and him and funerists, like user the Genesis, you know? Yeah. So he wanted to share with us, you know, to, um, just talk about the old days, you know? That was beautiful, Roy. No problem. You know, like... Jill, the thing is, like, that's, it's true. It's like, you know, uh, you know, other metal heads and stuff, like, when we're younger, like, we, you know, like, when we're like, holy shit, that girl likes kind of a corpse, you know? Like, it's like a, kind of a rare <laughs> breed, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, like, if, you know, the uh, Brad had found out that you played guitar and things gelled with all you, that's awesome, you know? And yeah, good yeah. things came out of it. Yeah. So, which is For beautiful, sure. you know. I mean, you, yeah. s Brad, and uh, had made a demo with the other member. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name, but this would be like the first funerist demo, and then after that, this demo Jason. is the demo that you made your debut on. Yes, right. That's the '94, I believe, okay. demo. So, and I noticed a change in the logo at that stage, which kind of stuck with the band for good, too. No, that that one, I'm, I can't be sure exactly who did that logo, but that has since yeah, it's um, changed he a revised bit. by Mark Mastro is the one that that oh, sick. did the the now current Funerous logo. Hmm, cool. So, yeah. so Mark, Mark Mastro. And Mark Mastro did another logo fix-up. Because he did immolations too, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah. Well, he Luck Lemay from Gorguts made yes. one, and then Mark Mastro did one that was asimilar, and it was oh. it's the current immolation logo. Gotcha. So yeah, Mark is like the logo fixer upper, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what Mark's a cool like dude. Hardcore, awesome, fucking. Oops. Yeah. Uh, what about uh? Like, dude. is that really like say like you know the Pittsburgh like. You know, like you, your band, Rachavor, Derkada, you all have like a really heavy fucking sound compared to like, you know, kind of like your Suffocations or bands that are tuned up a little more or your Florida bands. All the bands from like, say like the Pittsburghy area, uh -huh. they're all like low sounding and like. Yeah, Very, heavy, crushing, like, yeah. sewage sound. Well, that is because of the Pennsylvania water, you know. <laughs> it's, like, like really gross stuff, <laughs> like, okay. floating in the water. So that may have something to do with it. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so there was, I mean, everything I noticed, all the bands that came out of there were all, like, even the black metal bands that came out of there, you know, like your Asheron and your Saffiness and stuff. Yes. They're even like their own like breed, which is very sick, you know? Yes. yes. So I've always appreciated that scene. And like as an outsider from New York, you know? It, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's the water there. Steel City life. Definitely. <laughs> Jill is your man in the chat. He was. I'm... Philly here, no doubt. What's I going can't... on, everybody, on tonight's Death Metal podcast? 
You got that fun you got that funerous logo tattooed on my leg. That's sick as fuck. Who is that? Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Oh, Nathaniel. Yes, he does. Cool, definitely. Um, Festering Earth is 20 years old and uh, still great today. So we're going to go to a, a song, and Jill, we're going to give Jill a break. Jill, you good? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go pee because my Lasix is kicking in. No doubt. So we're going to go to um, Funerous <laughs>
back to live. Jill, you're very serious when you play. Um, I mean, I try and make it fun, but sometimes, you know, like... You gotta uh, be brutal. Like, trying to concentrate and stuff on, on stage. Yeah, and you're it's... like, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, oh, though. Fuckers. Like, yeah, you were, I mean, um, when you, uh, I wanted to ask about, like, you know, you, uh, you were, they said you were a guitar player, but you play bass. I wouldn't say I was a guitar player. I was a guitar scratcher who took, um, I took, uh, lessons from my neighbor who lived like three houses down. Okay. So, um, but I was never. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, um, you know, but now you, you know, been doing the bass for X amount of years. You, um, I'm sorry. You're fine. So you, uh, is there any, like you, any base of choice in your life? The BC Rich Mockingbird. Yeah. I prefer using that, but I have some others that I've used throughout the years, you know. My very first bass, if Brad remembers, it was like they, it's like no name, um, like piece of crap um, thing, like it had no we, name on it. Yeah, and we got to start somewhere, even over. if it is with a Sears bass, you know? Uh-huh. So, I mean, regardless, right? I think it's cool that um, it seems like a lot of people have been very brand loyal, too. It's like BC Rich, you know? Yes. Being, like, the most, like, death metal guitar there is. Yes, yes. Which is, you know, I mean, it always had a cool shape and everything, too. Yeah. So, it was kind of cool. Every one of them, you know, the the bitch, the iron bird, you know, all of them. Yeah, they're sick. I just recently had a chat with somebody online about with the, about BC Riches. So, you got uh, any preferences with your amplifiers or anything, Jill? Well, I I like Mesa Boogie is my favorite, um, and that's what I've used uh, probably in the last fifteen years of the fu uh, funerous life. Uh -huh. And I had, I, I, sorry about my memory, but I believe I was endorsed by Vader and I think I got a cabinet through them, um, for very cheap hmm. or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, but Miss a Boogie is your, is your game piece. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, I mean, that's, um, you know, like the reason I always ask these questions is because maybe your band has a signature sound or there's someone watching this. They're scoping out your equipment, your bass. I'm scoping it out. <laughs> you know, like I, you know, like I scope out bands equipment sometimes on stage. Right. I don't know why. Like, I, you know, like I'm, you know, interested in pedals and equipment, and recording, and amplifiers and you know, metal stuff, you know, people's shirts, you know, like I'm always looking at everyone's shirts. I think that's, I think death metal shirts are like a huge gateway to like meeting other people Oh, absolutely. for some reason, because like you could just like walk around and if someone's wearing like some kind of death metal shirt, you almost feel like you could just talk to them and absolutely. even if you don't know them. Absolutely. It's the camaraderie in the metal scene and, and that kind of thing that just, like people it's are so nowhere friendly. else though right like you don't no. see people with like pantera shirts stopping each other in the street you know or slayer <laughs> shirts even i'm sure it happens but yeah <laughs> i'm sure it does too <laughs> <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> but you know what i mean like i saw totally. uh, just for instance i was going to get one of my scripts at uh walmart or whatever and like oh i God. saw some kid wearing a mortician shirt Yes. But I noticed he had on his jacket, he had a Werflerch patch too. So I was like, oh shit, you got, you, you even know you're into Mortician, which is sick. And, you know, they gotten bigger over the years. But it's like, you have a patch on your jacket from a band that's like super obscure too. So uh -huh. I thought that was super cool. I was like, yo, Mortician, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I had to do it. I was just like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just feel like, you know, it's just, it feels very like family like with Absolutely. other metalheads. Yes, absolutely. Because that actually time. happened to me in Walmart as well. And that, this was me a, too. Like every a time worker. Now. <laughs> and he came up to me. I ha I can't remember what I was wearing, but um, 
he said something he came up and he said cool shirt and i'm like a metalhead and like, yeah and like ended up having a conversation and stuff and yeah th- times like that it's just really cool like getting to know other people that have your same interests of course yeah and you i mean as and playing with funerists like you got to play like around the world so like you got to play like in china i believe and like singapore and brazil so like when you go to these countries i mean i mean i'm assuming there's got to be some level of culture shock too that happens right oh my god yes yes yeah um a big thing was being in a car accident being driven by a roadie to oh, wow. the show and hitting uh, a truck carrying oxygen tanks. Oh, shit. I was sitting in the back seat and uh, my face bounced off the back of the front seat. Does that make sense? Um, oh, wow. And we all got hurt, you know, Kyle and, and me and whatever. But we ended up, we all went to the hospital and seeing like different this was in australia okay. in a different country's way of hospitals work and stuff is yeah it's it's weird like that like that different culture thing interesting but... no that's kind of cool and interesting to know you know yeah so yeah. i mean yeah it's it must be scary too because like you're in a foreign country you get hurt you know what i mean so that's that's kind of yes. creepy yes Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you like with your, which is like kind of cool that you got to do some world traveling. You know, you got any favorites over time that you were like, wow, that place? I'd say all of them, Roy. I, okay. I don't necessarily say I have a favorite because every place I've gone means so much to me. It's just, uh, just great people great memories great food right. you know stuff like that Hell yes it's uh great you know, food you think I, like me food i know <laughs> i what used to think about can beer I get, like here or there like the taco stands in mexico oh yes. god your heart's like especially the ones with the three-legged dogs uh, at at the side of the shop yeah hitting (laughs) i'm sure there's a lot of um uh, when you're in a band there must be a lot of driving involved and a lot of that type of stuff sure yeah and then you know i obviously flying places so it's it's a little bit of an endurance test you know right you know what I just yesterday had a a visit from both Barry from the band and um, and Zilla, who was our sound man. And we were talking, uh, like Zilla and I were talking about the times in Asia and stuff. And uh, I forget what I was, what was I getting at? Um, the travel time is rough. It's tough to uh, travel, you know? It's just tough. It's Traveling just is very mind. tough. I saw Funerous when they toured in Asia. Uh-huh. That's cool. Awesome. There's a flyer from that, too, I have here, which was this, right? Yes. Which is, um, this was the Black Death mm-hmm. Over Asia tour, which you played in the Philippines, Nepal, which we showed, I think, one of the videos of that in the beginning here. It was from India, I believe. And mm-hmm. then China... Like, not many people have been to China, Jill. Yeah. Jill. Yeah. Like, what's what's up with China? Like, just give us a rundown. Like, how did that feel? Just um, same as every other country, basically? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, I mean, I don't want to say anything bad, but, like, there's a lot of stuff there that... It's just different. ...is concerning, maybe. And, okay. Uh, but the, the people were were very very amazing one thing i want to quickly say was that um something i I can't recall all of the details but there was some reason that the bank the not the bangladesh the one of the, the um shows in china was 
I, I don't know, not canceled or something. I'm not sure, but the promoters made me the scapegoat and, Oh, okay. And they told the Chinese people that the show didn't happen because I canceled it because I was sick. Mm. And that really upset me um, because it had nothing to do with me. It was some other political bullshit. But right. what you. have you, it happened and yeah, it it's happens. over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens. And I mean, it's cool. I mean, that like... Um... Just in general, like I said, the world travel thing is cool. And I'm sure a lot of people would uh, definitely, you know. I saw, I had seen, I always talk to Alex about this. Like, he, they played in Immolation. And uh, they played, Immolation played in, like, India. And they had, like, this huge fucking, like, banner. Like, it was like a, like a, it looked like a, you know, like from Motley Crue. Or you went to a concert and they had, like, a huge fucking banner. Yeah. It was just all the Immolation. And I was just like. Yeah. I was like, damn, dude, is that on the side of the highway? That's so fucking cool, dude. <laughs> that was like a billboard. <laughs> yeah, it was like huge. Well, um, it's always the sweetest thing when the fans do something like that, make something like that. I've had people come up and give me items that they made for me, that kind of stuff. And, oh, that's um, nice. And that's like pulls at my heart like no other thing because <laughs> yeah. like if it wasn't for these people supporting you there would be no you know there would you wouldn't be there absolutely <laughs> yeah so that's that's cool i mean definitely um yeah jill slays exactly dude what's up barry thanks for joining the chat everyone hey, else Bear. too gutter uh, hey, impede gutter. uh leslie uh dj hellhammer into the storm uh brian i see in here lewis vasquez strictly Mako. what's up skip skip from head rot oh uh, love you jill proud hey, Gordy, dad moment when his daughter up. played in providence says skip he was having a proud dad moment when you played there <laughs> what's up uh vincent summerman how's it going brother long time no see that's so awesome. I can't read the stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, I have I, to. Re I'm reading you it. You say them. I'm, I never, I recognize the names. So. Yeah, I, I, I like, J hi, Jill. We love you, Gutter says. The, um, basically, um, with this interview, you know, like, we wanted to just touch a, touch base with Jill just to go over, like, the history of funerals, which is important stuff for death metal. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, you've, you know, un, Maybe at the time you didn't realize it because now you're older and it happens with me too. Like you made a mark by making the music that you made. Because there's people out there that listen to the Festering Earth CD and they listen to that 7-inch on Dark Descend. And there's, there's, there's people that are collecting 7-inches and records and that to them and they're like, oh, I have this funeral 7-inch, you know what I mean? It's like important stuff in a way, like... You know, it's 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 kind of cool that um, you know, definitely uh, just in general, it's kind of cool that uh, metal is just so fucking collectible and cool, you know. Yes, yes, of course. Document um, in death metal history. I mean, that's kind of yeah, definitely trying to a little bit reduce to sludge. Release was sick. That's what I'm saying. Like we need to document our own history. Sure. You know. And I didn't even see that hardcore guy doing this before I did this, just to put that in, out in motion on episode 100. <laughs> but, there, you know, like, there's, um, you know, like, it's like, there's like an oral history of death metal more than there is just like internet one, you know? Sure. And then it's this, and it, what is, like, this is like a, like, could be like a phone call between me and you, right, Jill? Absolutely. Yeah. So, like, you know, I'd be like, oh, you know, you played with Immolation or something, you know? And you're like, oh, I gotta, or I gotta, you know, in two weeks we have to practice and, like, we got a show. Just say something like this, you know? You're just like, oh, sorry, I, you know, I'm going to Germany and, like, you know, we're gonna play, a, you know, the Death Fest over there, you know? Uh, my friend uh, who th was uh, instrumental in that, Thorsten, uh, from NRW, from okay. Germany, he sent yes. a message to you. It said, hey, Roy, uh, Thorsten, want to send a message to Jill. Thanks, Roy. 
Hey Jill, love and positive vibes from NRW Death Metal Community. You played with Funerous, a killer gig at NRW Death Fest 2014. We will never forget. We met each other several times at Maryland Death Fest and at shows. Hails Death Metal and Jill uh, Funerous. Uh, Thor- cheers from Germany from Thorsten. Cheers to Germany. Cool cheers. dude, too. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in earlier, too, brother. I know we have time differences, so. Yes. So, you know what I mean? I want to say also really quick, thank you, Thorsten, but, uh, not but, but I, if for any reason that, uh, Ryan and Evan from MDF could see this, uh, mad, mad props for me because that was my yearly meeting to see everybody, you know, like, and the, just such good memories of like meeting people that you've speak to online or whatever but never got to meet and that I was agree. Even a to big, day. big yes absolutely um yeah. yeah it's been amazing like the maryland death fest became like it was a show but then it became more over time about like a meeting place right yeah yeah i mean i can remember being at like one of the earliest ones where there were the merch tables were it was like one room and the merch tables were outside and like uh i believe that um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I took a bunch early, of uh, early, early, early days. I remember Evan March gave me a bunch of like uh, uh, weed brownies at that one, actually. So, uh, which I, I, I <laughs> just whacked out very many. And I met I met Urban from Crematory there, and then you know we hugged it out hard because he's like, "You're the first person that ever wanted to put out Crematory," and that's I'm like, "Fuck so yeah, cool. dude! I love them, man." That's that's the camaraderie stuff that I love about our metal scene. Yeah, because... and then he played that day with Regurgitate, so that was cool too because they were cool too. I mean, Regurgitate sick as fuck. Yeah. It, yeah, Abscess. Yeah, it was when Abscess yes, played. Yes, Abscess too. played, absolutely. I, I drove them that. around because, I like, think... I helped, you know, I helped move Abscess around during that, so it was cool. Okay. So, so you know, like, I was, it was, yeah, it was, like, kind of like, you know, at that time, it was kind of like I was passing Chris Reifert's number on to the guys from Maryland, so. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, so, it's cool, man. So, yeah, you were, like, some of the, I think, they were no wait they were close enough they... that i felt like i could say to them you know at some points i had said to them i was like yo if anyone cancels at the last minute let me know because like maybe a band i know can come play there you know yes we're only in new jersey i i think that you were kind of like a tool I, that they were able to use in getting people at times, to play yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that. And, and vice versa, too, because basically they would throw a show sometimes, and myself and Gutter Christ would throw a show on the front end or the ass end of their show. So yeah. we would throw our own little fucking festivals, like, with the bands that flown in to play, like, uh, Maryland Death Fest, you know what I mean? Like, there'd be, like, Australian bands, like, Gruesome Stuff Relish from Spain, and... The you know, every day everything became nothing. Played at fucking Hartley's, so like, you know, pungent stench, all that stuff too. And so it was like the kind of cool to, and then meeting and hanging with all those people is always fucking cool as fuck too. Absolutely, you know? I agree. So we're gonna play another song, and then um, basically, my regrets is not saying hi to Jill at Gore Go- Growlers Ball in San Antonio. My shyness got the best of me. <laughs> is that iris like that's that? iris yeah oh no. sharing that tender memory iris we appreciate that that's cool though i mean people are shy at shows they can be i can not be everyone's no, yeah not everyone's as outgoing as roy fox who just walks up to every single fucking person there and shit <laughs> i'm just like what's going on like i don't even know them Jill, the MDF with the mustaches by far was the best of times. Oh my god. <laughs> like uh, me, Sharon, Mary, and Stenka. Uh, and then one time, uh, Christina and um, Michelle Maiden had the mustaches on, but there's like the pictures of, of like me, Sharon, Mary, and Stenka. 
with the mustaches in the hotel room. I was drunk AF, and I do not <laughs> remember. <laughs> but why in the world, like, we put these mustaches on and, like, we're messing around, but it was funny as hell. There's pictures of us, like, on the bed, like, all, like, kind of hugging and stuff. And I remember Sharon You see those wasted. photos, and next day you're like, oh, yes. no. Yes, yes. Sharon was wasted. <laughs> on the, She's, like, laying, trying to get ready to go to sleep, and I, like, jumped on top of her. <laughs> and there's, like, pictures of that. And then, like, I'm squeezing her because... You know, those yeah, girls that's cute. Like my I mean, friends. yeah, we we gain a lot of memories from like traveling as friends too, right? From like this stuff. So it's yeah. like, and then you don't for some reason like even now you said like, well, you know, I forgot, but like you remember, you know, like things they yeah. come back to you when they're more yes. important. I think. Yes. You know, like knowing the name of every band you played with is not really the game here. It's about, you know, you went different places and your band made an impact by having a couple of releases out there. And then it's nice for people to be able to just, you know, in the, either in the chat or just me and you talk to each other about like what you were doing, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, but... like the, the release kind of like proceeds you, you know what I mean? Unless the person sees you live, and then they're just like, wow, man, damn, Jill is sick. <laughs> so, well, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, I yeah, I got to do a lot um, in my life as far as music. My dreams, all my dreams since I was a teen came true. Aww. And, um, and I mean, without getting, like, into deep stuff, you know, I owe most of that to brad and jason and somebody else right enough said yeah yeah so i mean you it's cool what's up uh fraser how's it going brother fraser has your cds check my new band next up we're gonna play another live this is from um japan
produce the sludge. <laughs> That was sick. I like the part where you're like, we're going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pure brutality. Exactly. She's like, we're here to kick your ass. <laughs> That's good stuff, Jill. You know, not everybody could think to make that up on the spot. So, so yeah, definitely cool stuff. I mean, as Thank uh, you. Barry corrected, the show was in Calcutta. It wasn't in Japan that one. Okay, that was in India then, huh? Yeah, so okay. that looked sick. The scene, cool in India? Very much. Yeah, mm. very much. Uh, shows were really good there. Um, and even, like, Nepal. It was, like, okay. kind of that whole scene was really awesome. But, like, yeah, it's, it's cool to see, like, the different, um, you know, different types of meddlers in these different countries and stuff. Um, yeah, you yeah. seem really into it. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Like, you know, you see the rabidness of the fan base, especially Absolutely. with the shirts. Yes. And stuff like uh, when we play Bangladesh, like, they don't get many shows, you okay. know? And so the people that came to the shows and the supporters and stuff, they're sh like, they are, yes, so rabid. Mm of an audience because they don't get to see shows all the time. Right. And, they want uh, metal there. And then, and then like, they're like, 
apparently Bangladesh has a um, a uh, curfew. Okay. And like, I remember like we had to kind of rush through the shows so the kids could get going and get home and stuff. So. What's the curfew in Bangladesh? Like seven p.m. or something? I don't. I don't remember. Mm. Uh, but it it was it was like. Pretty early. Yes. Yes. Okay. Huh, interesting. Never knew and, that. And like, I think they had to get like on trains and stuff to travel home. So something mm. like that. Okay. Yeah, that could uh, could actually affect the curfew or the train possibly. You know. Uh huh. Interesting. That's interesting. The death metal podcasters want to know that stuff. We want to know what the scene is like in India. Bottom line, you know. It seems like yeah. interesting to me to play at such like bizarre locations too, you know? Yeah. So, Cuz the US like I mean, I'm not trying to downplay the US cuz I felt a different way in every state, but like the US is the US, you know? Yes. You go to another country, you know, say you even go to Montreal and you're like, "Oh, Putin." <laughs> 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 They have, they have stuff that, you know, like you said earlier with the tacos, like, you know, like you Street see tacos. that taco stand, your heart was beating inside. You were like, oh, my God, I'm about to have yeah, these Mexican yeah. tacos. Yes. It's like food is like important, right? When you're traveling. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because yeah. you want to try all these different things and stuff and mm. but you don't always know the best place to go. So, you know, maybe asking the promoters and stuff, but. Yeah, there's plenty of, of times that, that we've been taken to, um, you know, out to eat or whatever after the show. Right. I remember in Japan, um, uh, we did um, these three shows with um, a- Anatomia. Right. So, and they all took us at the end of the show in the, I mean, I'm talking huge Those spread of food. Yeah, and you yeah. just like pass it around and like how the culture is there the people are so warm and um inviting and there's like some kind of integrity about them that is something that's so um good to see yeah, and it's, around. Beautiful. it's a beautiful thing yes it is so this was a photo from back then that tour yeah uh-huh Cool. So yeah. yeah, these you and the guys from Anatomia. Anatomia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, super cool. And uh, there's Roberto and it's Craig Smolowski. I thought that was Craig Smolowski. Yeah, in there. he did that tour uh, oh. with us. He he was doing double duty in camp and funerals. So the journeyman, Craig Smolowski, played in Gorephobia, Incantation, Immolation, Funerus. That's a lot of different Asians. <laughs> <laughs> he only didn't play in Suffocation. There you go, right? Anatomia rules. Cool picture. So, Anatomia, so sick. Anatomia are kings. I love being in Japan. Jill still kills. Definitely legends. They are legends. Um, yeah. They're, they're basically, like, Anatomia, you know, they're... They're like, I said it in the other episode, um, like last week or something. I'm like, they're like the most underground death metal band there is, basically. Like one of them, you know? Yes. Because they like so like, they've been around for so long. Takashi with like either Transgressor or Necrophile and all these bands they did. Yeah. Anatomia. So it's like, I feel the same way as you. It's like, I'm very happy to have them as my friends, you know? Sure. And sure. I watch their food pictures through Instagram too, and they post oh. food like crazy. And I was like, <laughs> "What is that?" You know? Yeah. It's just like yeah. amazing to see. Um, it's amazing to see like different like foods. Like I'm like, "Damn, what what is that?" I want. I'd love to right. consume some of that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I get a um, little jealous, you know. They um, they are all uh, legends in their own right, and they are amazing guys. You know, because sometimes you come across bands or whatever that are like kind of, eh, you know, especially right. if you're traveling with them. But, mm. um, but no, they were absolute gems, you know, and then, and Naru as well, um, who is, uh, he, he brought us down, cool. down, he brought us over to Japan. So, 
So Sam Biles has a question, if you could answer it. Tell us about your meeting with your hero, Ronnie Dio. Uh, a time that I would never in my lifetime ever, ever, ever forget. Even when my mind goes, right. <laughs> I still remember. But um, it was just simply that we went to see him and we had um, meet and greet passes mm. from a friend and um, we got to to meet him at this uh, like it was some kind of like a pavilion thing with tables and stuff and right. um, so we a bunch of people there and we were kind of standing there and here they come out um, Ronnie was the most genuine person that you could ever meet. Like his fans mean more to him than probably anything. Right. And he it was like made you instantly comfortable in his presence. Like you were the rock star, not him. Mm. I don't think he considers himself a rock star, you know, right. but, um, but, that was. Does he think I'm born again? Because I noticed that patch was on your jacket when I did the mock up of your thing. I'm sorry, what was that? The, was he singing on Born Again too? Was that the album? Black Sabbath, Born Again? No, Born Again is um, That's Ian Gillis. singer? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. So you're, are you, you an equal opportunity Black Sabbath or are you all Ronnie or what? No, because I actually, I mean, it's so hard to say. I love Ozzy. I love okay. Ronnie. But actually, my favorite Black Sabbath album is Born Again, which a lot of people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, but hmm. yeah, it is yeah, that's uh, cool. my favorite album. But um, but cool. uh, but as far as Ronnie goes, that's my immediate go-to as far as needing, like, soothe or something, something about his music and his voice and all that does something for me and um, my, um, like I have certain songs that mean a lot to me two of them are uh, Rainbow Eyes and Catch the Rainbow sure. and, 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 and Catch the Rainbow will be played at my funeral service that's already written in stone right the uh that's those rainbow albums they have a, they actually mean a lot to me also oh, they, like you hear boy. those are so emotional like, like like the musicianship in those albums between right. cozy and uh ronnie and richie and you know just top notch you know sure temple of the king yep good shit yep good shit the year of the fox <laughs> How about that? <laughs> my old boss invited was invited on dio's bus after a show one night ronnie signed his bicep immediately ran and got a tattoo of it at the nice. French quarter that's cool nice. yeah rainbow does rule man oh shit i'm a I big rainbow my, freak i have my dexcom thing oh, here she's got a rainbow tattoo it, but hold on there's my My Ronnie. Damn, your hair is long, girl. Oh, wait. Don't hurt yourself. My Ronnie tattoo. Aww. He could see that. That's awesome. Yeah. Born yeah. Again was rare and a very dark album. Exactly. Yes, it was. Ronnie is the best so singer good. of all time. Definitely, dude. I, I agree. Definitely. So, anyway, um, let's see here. Very cool, Dio. I, I'm, I don't have any tattoos, so I, I wonder if who I would tattoo if I was to tattoo a, an artist. Fans know. of Ronnie. This Hands is for up. you. Yeah, the, his grandmother taught him. And we all do that. I'm all like... The evil eye. Come on now, Gene Simmons was the originator, right? I don't know. I mean, I never really... I don't put those debates. I, I don't, just said that. I don't like... do the possessed cam thing. I don't do the Gene Simmons thing. I just like when he spit fire. Right. They were they were probably my metal, like, gods growing up, you know? I the hear you. Kiss stuff was, like, really, like, whoa, you know? Like, I hear you. 
that was at the time, you know, just really mind them and ACDC. I got to hear Iron Maiden on the advanced tapes because my friends, my, my best friend's sister dated the guy that worked at Capitol Records. Oh. So when they had releases that would come out, there would be tapes saying that their house would like early Iron Maiden promos and stuff. That was like the first time I had heard Iron Maiden. So I probably was hearing it like right when it was either coming out or had like not even out, which I thought was cool. At the time, I had no record. You know, I was just like, oh, cool. Who's this band? They're called Iron Maiden. Ha <laughs> ha. You know? <laughs> but definitely ACDC was big at that household, as was T-Rex. And, and something that followed me through the ages, which ended up being the Grateful Dead, basically. Because they would listen to the Grateful Dead constantly. Okay. So, like, for some reason, like, once I had heard, like, some Grateful Dead songs later, I was like, I know these songs, like, really well. You know? <laughs> and I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't put two and two together. I was like, oh, you know. So, thank you it's, to Dave Best Sisters. It's, uh, I think, like, the, when you're so young and getting starting to get into, like, heavier music, and it was, like, how you would as a kid go to the record stores and pick the albums out because of the covers definitely and you picked out what was the most evil um dark looking mm -hmm. images the and most that's skulls. what you had to buy <laughs> yeah the most skulls and castles right, right. Better. yeah yeah i uh Kristen, Kristen canazia my first show was Iron Maiden, Mecca here in Milwaukee when I was 15. That's cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely Iron Maiden. It's a lot of people's. Come on, you all love Casey and the Sunshine Band. We kind of <laughs> dare, you know? We just don't talk about it. <laughs> My Uncle Pat got me into metal, but Sabbath and uh, DC was a, a old man's growing up. <laughs> For sure. So, yeah, I mean, Iron Maiden, ACDC, Kiss, those bands were, like, definitely... What about Thresh, Jill? Like, Metallica? Like, what was oh your Oh, my go God. Like, I was the... Um, okay, so we're Metallica, talking high school any days. Any first Metallica moments oh my you God, could bring me? I was the biggest Metallica fan, like, in school, like, high school. I was, like, the the strangest oddball girl that you could ever meet and me and like my best friend slash boyfriend at the time chris is like we were like the metallica people like it was a club you know right. <laughs> Gang. I, I got to go to school with a lot of metalheads and there was a whole like we were the whole gang of us were just so close mm. and like uh it, it was we were called the chainers Oh, okay. So, so there was a jocks and the chainers kind of thing. And uh, mm. like I was either a chainer chick or a chainer babe. So <laughs> I got you. So, um, yeah, I mean, Metallica, my whole beginning years yeah. or whatever were the, yeah, I was obsessed with uh, Fade to Black. And gotcha. yeah, I loved, I loved the, the, the thrash. You Metallica. and the chainers would mosh to that. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. They called our group the burnouts for some reason. They're like, oh, those are the burnouts. Which like kind of oh, was yeah. like insulting at the time because it's like I'm not on drugs at the moment, you know? But I guess there was a lot of people on drugs, so we were suddenly it's like we were burnt out before we even like got to be what's up, uh Raja Kun. So yeah, I mean uh definitely um was sick to um have uh metallica and slayer and all these bands that got us like really pumped the fuck up you know right he learned those possessed was there ever a point for you where you were kind of like done with the thrash and the metal and you were kind of like all right demo bands are better uh i mean, you I stuck with your i don't think i can albums? say that i think i was just like i there was a lot of early on bands that like all kind of rolled into one that i love like say venom um yeah slayer um metallica um you know the the early old schools 
80s scene because that's that was my days in high school and and the the growing up and and knowing or getting into those early on bands you know and it just it just snowballed you know like starting with like priest crew you know um twisted sister which is still one of my my favorite bands ever <laughs> there goes my heart beating again but anyway like it, it started out with that kind of thing and rolled down the hill into like more heavier um like death metal stuff and that kind of thing Roy? Hmm. <laughs> What's going on? But Roy's not there. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but if people can still hear me, like, I got to thank Roy for this interview and for letting my, um, my words to be, um, to be out there, I guess I want to say. And, um, Um, yeah, <laughs> hey, Roy. Um, maybe I'm still not sure if I'm being um live or people can hear me or whatever maybe somebody send one of those messages like they can't they're still watching and i'm still on but if if it is um if it is still live and people can still hear me i know that i just recently made a post about my health situation. I know a lot of you know this. Um, but anyways, I just started um, getting uh, hospice care because uh, I have um, diagnosis of uh, end stage heart failure, end stage atherosclerotic heart disease and um and cardiomyopathy i've been getting um hospice uh yeah they've been coming in and helping me uh i've gotten an outpouring unbelievable amount of support from people and it is overwhelming to me how many people uh have come to say good things about me and i just never in my life imagined that i made that much of an impact um but the the comments that everybody is making on my facebook and stuff and the the messages and everything is just so comforting to me right now. Uh, amazing, just amazing. It's, I I feel the love in just reading these comments and stuff like the uh, posts on Facebook and stuff. It means so much to me to hear that because, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I've had this really horrible mental illness since I was young and I have, um, you know, I, I, I self-loathe and I still do, 
but um, I am finally getting peace because I know that I'm just going to be comfort measures only and and I get peace and comfort from the things that you all are telling me. <clears throat> um, and the impact that I made on people, I had no idea because I, I can hardly take a compliment. Like I, I'm not good at that. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that people care about me. <laughs> It's so weird because my family is so loving. My upbringing was so loving with my family. My parents are the absolute best. Anyways, I don't want to try and get all sappy, but <laughs> but the, the thing is, is like everything that everybody is saying just comforts me so much to know that I made an impact on people. I hope Roy is going to come back soon because I'm not good at this ad libbing stuff. Um, yeah, just a really great support system that the metal community and everybody I know has given me. It's just uh, amazing. Uh, I think Roy had a podcast brain fart, says Iris. <laughs> I think I am too. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I hope there wasn't like a, a mass exodus of people leaving the um, podcast because they started talking about this sappy shit. But um, yeah. I don't know. So, somebody want to send me a question or something? And anybody? because it's kind of funny it's a little uncomfortable but it is kind of funny um yeah i i had some really great company the last couple days um my husband's girls were here today they're they live like a little over two hours away or something and man it was so much fun we had a blast um uh yeah can can somebody send me a question to answer what about though in this like thing where people can send questions is that What shirt am I wearing? Morpheus descends. New York, old school. Um, I, I I don't know if um, if anybody uh, knows of Sam and Zara, who played on the um, played on um, Reduced to Sludge, and was in the band for years. He uh, was the original, um, I can't see them, Sharon. I don't know where, I don't, I'm, I'm not seeing the, any of them. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Sam and uh, Rob Yench, um, just, uh, old school death metal, you know, from New York and stuff. And yeah, good good band for sure and now uh one of my 
local friends here in town plays in with them as well. The best food I've had on tour. Oh, wow. Um, I don't, I, I guess, I guess, um,
<laughs> you guys actually stayed here? So what's up, everybody? Sorry I had a breakdown on the stream right there. You guys actually stayed here? All right. Let me see here. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we're back. We're going to start another stream. That way I got a more uh, straight... Uh, a straight... Um, let me see, though. I'll see if Jill can just log back into this. Sorry, guys. That was the longest internet downage I ever had in my life. What's up? <laughs> Sorry about that.
guys. Sorry about the uh, 20 minute friggin' technical difficulty. Jill, can you hear me in there? She has her uh, laptop hooked up to this there. Try to uh, log back in with the phone if you can, Jill. All right, so sorry about that, guys. Me and Jill were getting into intense Metallica conversations too, you know? So I had to restart the computer three friggin' times. What was the introduction to Funerous? Mine was listening to them at Dark Realm Records. Bye. Jill's trying to sign back in, I think, but we're crossing paths with the messages a little bit. Jill held it together because I warned her in advance that I, w I said, if I go offline, you might get stuck on here alone, but, you know. So I need Jill to sign back in with her phone under the same link. If She get she needs a second to do it, though, because um, I think her husband helps her to do it, so. But uh, so far, obviously, you know, this is Death Metal Podcast, home of technical difficulties. We lost a little bit of internet there, and uh, I restarted my computer 90 times, and then eventually the, the internet came back on. So uh, as we were talking about with Funerous, um, you know, we had Jill here to talk about like the old, um, the old, uh, what do you call it? The old days of the Funerous stuff. Patchmaster made these shirts. So. Turkada and LA would rule. You hear that, Sharon? <laughs> so, sorry about the technical difficulties. I, sometimes I just can't control, like, a snowstorm or whatever's going on. It's kind of funny when Yane from Eternal Darkness gets you a uh, text to tell you your internet sucks. And he's a not even in this country, you know? Your internet could eat Max Headroom shorts. I mean, I'm not having a great time. <laughs> I am with Jill when she talked. <laughs> the latest Dizma EP rules? Appreciate it. No West Coast plans at the time. So they, there's your answer. So what's up, Death Metal Podcast watchers? This is, um... So far, we've had an interview with Jill, but we had it timed out. I gotta, um... Try to, uh... Email myself the StreamYard link for my phone. Because for some reason, I couldn't, uh... Even log in through there. What's up, John Grave? I just was, like, offline for, like, 20 minutes straight. But Paul Kimball said I went out like gore grind seven inches, which is very funny. Let's see what we got here, though. I'm going to play something if it lets me here. Hey, Jill. Sorry about that. Hello? <laughs> Let's see if we can get Jill back on here. Alright, until then, we're going to play some of this video, though. Oh, wait, there she is. Sorry, Jill. show Roy what? you can you hear me I can hear you sorry about that Jill I left your oh ass God. out there I just, <laughs> I just had a fucking total meltdown I'm, I, I I'm don't fucking... want it I didn't want that to happen and I, I I knew it was gonna though because oh. I, I, can't, I don't know this tech stuff, stuff no no it was just me having an internet outage so like I was able to well, send I a few of, texts through the phone, like, but that was it. I kind of ad libbed while you were gone, and then all of a sudden I wasn't on anything anymore, and I don't know. I don't even know. Am I in the room like with you now, now you or are. is this a? Um, yeah, no. Now you're in the room. Now, so we're uh, live. We're live again. Okay. I'm sorry, so sorry about that, everybody. 
Yeah, um, that normally if it goes down like that, it goes down for like two minutes. I just restart my computer and then it just I'm back up again. So I'm sorry I left you there because I could go on my phone and see you a little bit, and I'm like, Jill looks like she's crying. Like, <laughs> oh, oh my god! No. I'm, I'm like, I then I see. Yeah, I like I said, I started to go into Jordy you know, Rodriguez said you yes. did great, Jill. So I oh, guess that means you need your own Jordan. show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jill, George. your gear and tuning, how do you get that sick sound? What's that? What Somebody was, that? was asking about your gear and your tuning and how do you get your sick sound? I just, um, I think a lot of it had to do with the Mesa Boogie the head that I use and um, just down tuning. And uh, I used uh, the. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, hey, what do you oh, tune to? Like a B? Yellow, uh, we tuned to B. Cool. Originally, when I first joined, like we were doing a B flat, I believe, but and then it just went to a straight B. And I I used that. I believe it was the death death metal pedal. Um, oh yeah, that thing. Hell and, yeah. And the tuner, and that's. That's all I would use live or uh, um, for recording. Hey, Jill, oh. in the comments, it's saying Jill knows exactly how to keep a crowd around. Love you so much. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> you definitely and that, like everyone, like the amount of people that, that were like, watching it. It says uh -huh. that it's um, Madison Hunter. Yes. Uh, thank you, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, this is a family affair, this show, obviously, too. So, sorry for the internet dropout. Oh, shit. I, my phone was dying, and I had to plug it in, and I keep trying to go back to the, my seat. And, yeah, we're um... gonna, I'm going to play a video right now, so take your time, Jill, okay? Okay, Roy. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my God. 
All right, we back and live. That was Sam on drums. That's correct. Yes. There was a show at St. Vitus, and Jill, you had an awesome uh, disembowelment shirt on. Hey, Did Jill, I? When we went offline and we came back. There was more people on now than there was before. So. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh shit, my phone's talking to me. Sorry, Yane from Eternal Darkness. You didn't get that? Anyway, let me shut that off. And they said Jill held it down too. So appreciate. Um I tried until I something happened with my thing. Awesome footage oh. crushing says Kat from uh UK. What's up, Kat? How's it uh, going? Hi Kat. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that was a badass show from St. Vitus in New York, actually. My wife actually headbanged to this song. First headbanging death metal wife ever. There you go. There you go. Aww. Hell awesome. yeah. And uh, the bass tone was ruling. That was a good video with good sound. Somebody else in the chat said they're like, damn, the sound sounds really good on here. I want to say we did two, uh, what was it, St. Vitus shows? Right. Um, and actually both of them went really well. You know what? I have something, too, to show here. Um, I, there was more than one person that sent a video here. So uh, my friend sent a video here. we got to watch. Jill, my darling. Jill, my darling, Jill. No, you haven't been feeling good. And there's a show for you tonight, and we're wishing you um, Merry Christmas and so many things like I love you, and I love you, and we all love you, and we all love you, and I love you, and I don't like it when you're sick and not feeling good, and I wish, I wish... I can take your place and be sick for you and you can feel better. And if I could do that, I would do that because I don't like it when you're sick and I'm real sad, but we're trying to be happy. So I was just trying to send you some love. Um, thanks Roy for doing the show for Jill tonight and I'll be watching and maybe I can chime in again. I wanted to keep this short and sweet and Jill it was just it's really sad that you're not feeling good and we're just trying to make you feel better tonight so that you can make it through the night and know how much we all love you. And it was, I, I always had so many, I, it's just, it's hard to say anything because no one likes doing this because it's hard and, and what you're going through is even harder. And I just wanted to tell you, I loved hanging out with you the 50 times or more that we did and all the laughs we had and and all the memories that i can't even think of how many there are because there's a lot and i couldn't pinpoint any of them but i love you so much honey and i'm 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 so sad that you're not feeling good and uh i love you i love you i love you i love you jill darling love you okay Sorry, Jill. I didn't make the meanie cry. Make you cry. No. Steve Eggs there with the um. You know, he said something there. He goes, "I seen you at fifty shows, Jill." Yeah. So, like I had thought about you and me, and like every time I would see you, we would be at fifty different fucking shows, basically. You know. Right. And they kind of all bl like some of them are blending into each other. It was like kind of funny because um. I, I seen Steve Eggs and that uh, that one little part, and I'm like, yeah, there's like how many times you see Jill have a laugh at the show, you know? You've yeah. always been like there and very upbeat and like you know like happy and uh, like a lot of people in metal are kind of like angry, you know? So it's like, <laughs> sure, you, know, you brought a smile to a lot of people's faces at shows, and you know Thank you, you would do friend. vending sometimes or you'd be yeah. hanging out having you know hanging out at the bar talking to people and i basically always see you with a smile on your face so that's always like a huge signature for you you know it shows it's so easy to be um 
like upbeat and friendly because it's all people just like me, you know, like, right. like I said earlier, the camaraderie that I feel in the scene, but thank you, Steve eggs. That was fucking amazing. Yeah, he's and awesome I love guy. you too. Bud. Yeah. Um, Steve eggs. The man. This... Steve eggs is the real deal. Says Francisco. Definitely dude. And then a hundred percent. Roy, Steve... pay your internet brother. Schnauzer, <laughs> My internet's uh, paid. Mint. Was was Steve Eggs in Minch? He was in Minch, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. He Roy, he's like uh, he's guy. like in uh, like fourteen different yeah, he's bands. In Nut Screamer, <laughs> the band that plays. That's on a, oh my god, yeah, Nut Screamer. They play on a, um <laughs> part of their songs are done on top of a roller coaster. Parma, Parma loves Jill exactly. And Jill loves Parma and all yeah. the guys in it, you know. Or, yeah. Not guys, I mean, good scene. There. All the peeps, you know, Jim yeah, Kanye. Always a good scene. Him. Yeah, rest in peace, Jim Kanye. So it's hard to uh, think of someone lost so young too, you know. Yes. The um the scene in the Ohio scene is like kind of cool. Like every time I went out there, I felt like I was like, God damn, decrepit and terror and you know, mm -hmm. like stagnated corpse. Uh, but then they would play with like. You know the bands I was friends with, and yeah, I would meet all these people. And I remember meeting Steve Eggs out there, and I went to yeah. some record store and I bought his cassette. And then Brian from Terror said, "Hey, Steve, someone bought your cassette." And then we were in uh, Dee Dee's house, I think, and um, he like he called on the phone and he was like, "Hey, what's up, man? You're the first person that ever bought my cassette, dude." You know. I was okay. like, oh, that's sick. <laughs> you know? Is, that's um, Sekula's? Yeah, well, I was at I was with Sekula because he had set up the show out there. And okay. then we were at some girl named Dee Dee's house. Uh, but but uh, Steve Eggs called to give me a personal thanks for buying his demo. And he's like, are you going to be at the show later? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be there, dude. And then later, <laughs> like, we became, like, good tape trading friends. So, like, okay. I would send stuff to him, and he would send stuff to me. And then one time I sent a letter to him, and I wrote the word Steve Eggs on the top of it. Uh-huh. And then that became his, nick his nickname. <laughs> That's how it started? Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> that is an awesome story. I never heard that before. I mean, I have told it once, maybe, but it's an exclusive for Death Metal Podcast. Ohio Death Fest was a staple of death metal. Yeah. Uh, D's uh, nuts, no, 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 no. Jill, what about the World Series of Metal? The World Series of Metal. That oh, was the, the World one Series I of Metal? <laughs> That's the one I remember, yeah. That's your favorite one? It's just one that I is in my head that I remember, um, you know, those fests. Right. But, uh, yeah. It's just, that's when I kind of met, like, everybody like dora and Dwayne and um you know decrepit and yeah. Uh, um yeah but like the whole cleveland scene stuff and, band anyway so. and um paul <laughs> um yeah paul from embalmer yes thank you his sure. last name wasn't getting into my head there but um yeah like all, all those, those people yeah so, yeah, uh, so, cool. sodomized uh or oh yeah sodom sodomized i remember them yeah um and scott hilberg and matt uh matt uh shalady in immolation but, um why i can't come up with his first Parma name rules, the drummer man. he was in that odious sanction there's steve um, eggs right now steve eggs it's true see he's confirming the story <laughs> <laughs> we love you steve eggs a lot of ohio in the house here sominous mm -hmm. definitely john lincoln man thank you john ohio scooter rules steve shatley that's thank you steve shalady shalady yes yeah yes whoever Drummer sent that Emulation. thank you very much <laughs> francisco yeah Odious Sanction is one of my favorite bands. Brian Odious. needs to resurrect Ohio Death Fest, hopefully soon. We'll see. Oh, Brian Baxter. That would be is, sick. He's, he's the one that put that on, right? 
I believe so. And that was a really sick fest. For sure. You know? I mean, yeah. is it a far distance between going to Cleveland and living where you lived? Less than four hours. So okay. well, not a bad far. trip at all. Right. For you. Yeah. That's pretty far. That's about how far I have to go to go to a show now. I have to go about f like less than four hours. Okay. Whether it be New York City with traffic or if I go to Philly, it's usually about like four hours. Okay. Or I I've been going to Rhode Island and going up and seeing Skip and, um, you know, uh, Derek uh, and Ancient Death. And because we uh, signed the band Ancient Death. So, like, I'll go up there and go to a show up there. It's It's like. I feel like I know everyone there, which is amazing. Yeah. Did you start to yeah. feel that way when you would go around to different shows and fests that you're like, damn, I know like everyone here. That's an amazing feeling. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no. like Rhode Island. I, I love going there because I get to see, you know, Christy Mayer, you know, maybe Jeff yeah. Grossland, um, and, uh, Mike sure. Brown yeah. and, um, uh, just, so many people that are like near and dear to me, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Skip and um, Mike from Head Rot were like my diabetic brothers. <laughs> like right. the th the three of us together would like. I remember we got a picture together, and then I put I made like a meme kind of thing. Is like ketoacidosis times three. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah all good people up there for sure there is there's so many like and you don't realize it until you're there and then you realize you look at the crowd or you look at all the people at the show and you're like fuck i know like 25 fucking people here yep which is amazing yep yeah rhode island scene with phlegm rest in peace jim fleet definitely dude. yes yes yeah that was a tough rest one. in peace jim yeah jim was awesome dude yeah four hours to a show yeah it takes four hours to get to a show and when you live in certain places i guess uh it take it like i'm like hour and a half to two hours from pittsburgh so i have to drive like two hours every time I oh, that to sounds like show. my albany shows so like if i go to albany i have to drive about an hour and 15 minutes you know but there, then there's not many shows there so yeah rest right. in power to jim definitely dude so um jill sorry about that uh internet outage i appreciate your trooper that stayed on you could have been like <laughs> Fuck this guy. yeah i mean that was I think I was doing okay, but then I started getting all sappy. Oh. And, but then, like, once uh, I went, like, off or out or whatever, like, I had no idea if people could still hear me and stuff. And I kind of started to have a, a meltdown. And, and Sharon oh. was, like, calling me and, uh, and telling me I need to do this and that. You know, thank you, Sharon. And, yeah, um, yeah. Appreciate yeah, you, because... Sharon. I know. We not, were, I was in a text thing with Iris and Sharon and like all these people were like, yo, it's out. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. I'll fix it. It'll come back on. She did so great. Madison Hunter said exactly. That's because she's an entertainer. You saw her up there on the stage. <laughs> yeah. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Super sick, you know? What, um, over time too, it's kind of cool. Like when I think about like the history of Funerous, like you had Sam from Morpheus Descends as a drummer. Yes. You had Kyle who played an incantation as a drummer. You know, you had like all these like really tight drummers and cool people. Absolutely. Man. Like yeah. I have been blessed with that. Like. I got to play with Jim Rowe. I got to play with Sam and Zara. I got to play with Kyle Severin. I got to play with Craig Smolowski. You know, it's just uh, who are you like know. an alumni of the, the like some of the greatest death metal. Absolutely, the best of the best. You know, right? But yeah, um, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. So that is super that's cool. An honor for me to be able to work with you know those guys and my my um dear friend pat carroll has been the drummer for the last like maybe nine eight years or something 
in his yeah. own right. Is, Let's is look at the, some of these different. lineups too, because we didn't even look at the old photos. So okay. You have an old photo of uh, McEntee, uh, uh, Sam, and you. It looks like uh -huh. you're in like another country in this photo. That actually is my in my hometown. It's oh, just shit. like a, <laughs> yeah, it's like a rock, a huge rock. Okay. Um, that you walk to, you walk a little bit th through the woods, I believe. And one of my best friends growing up lived right there, like on the street. Mm. But you, it was like two minutes from her house to um, to this rock, and you just you can overlook the whole city. And this city had this is the one that got flooded years ago, right? Like oh the yeah, entire thing couple got floods. Flooded. Last then, one like was seventy seven. This being one of your lineups. Um, so you had Brad in the band back then, and then uh -huh. Kyle. And somebody was saying earlier, because you have that Venom shirt, you are the fucking most cult person there is. <laughs> the most what? Cult person there is. Oh, no. So like, yes, of course, this is Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Which we didn't, you know what we didn't show? We didn't, we didn't show the the young Jill here. Which we need oh, no. to show. Oh, yes. I'm scared. Oh, with her splatteria was... shirt on, no less. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, how old is this picture, Jill? Because this, you look pretty from, young there. That's from Reduced to Sludge, so that's not all that long ago. I mean, okay. Well, yeah, like probably ten, twelve years ago, I guess. Okay, cool. I like your shirt. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, maybe we could talk about this. Like I had, okay. This early show, like this is like the who's who of like your little area right there. Because you have Lethal <laughs> Prayer, Migos, yeah. and Funerous all on one show at yeah. Barataco Baratikos Tavern. Can you talk to me about Baracto's Tavern? <laughs> Baracto. <laughs> um, my friend Matt, I, I want to say his family owned this bar um, like over the years. And then it eventually became his. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is the story. But m so my friend Matt tended bar and like owned the bar. And he would have us come and play shows and like i even actually put a show on um this is how early we're talking i brought nile okay to matt's like this big of a um this big of a, a right, venue a small place. <laughs> yeah but um <laughs> and they played in his bar and like so yeah, like he's he's a metalhead, so he was loving the you know stuff. But that was the the show. I think that kind of maybe like Funerous got more recognition. I mean, w w the early days we didn't play that many shows. We played like a couple, a handful of shows, like in Pittsburghish Green Greensburg era area. Okay. <laughs> but um, that that was like our first Johnstown thing. So, yeah, I saw Lethal Prayer on there and Miguel. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah. this, is a yeah. this is the hometown heroes show. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. sick, old school. The um, mm -hmm. Francisco wanted to say, Jill, your hair is always on point. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> no, uh, actually, it was just yesterday, I believe, because I had my big white stripe coming through like it does. <laughs> And uh, my husband, John, just dyed it for me yesterday. So, Okay, thank here's you, John. another good one. When directions were handwritten on the flyer. Exactly. Like, you had to put yeah, the directions my writing. on the flyer. What's yeah. Lethal Prayer sound like? They're pretty, they're pretty like, death metal. I got a little Lethal Prayer so, uh, story. I was working at a gas station in New Jersey. Okay. And this, like, trucker guy rolls up. And um, I don't know if he was looking to use the bathroom or something. He, directions... And he's like, you know, he comes up, he's talking to me, and then I'm just working, you know? And he's like, hey, I noticed your shirt. Like, you listen to, like, death metal and stuff? I was like, yeah. He's like, hold on a second. So he goes to his truck, he comes back. He's like, here's my band. And it was Lethal Prayer. Okay. And it was that guy, Belial. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. So he oh gave me God. a fucking CD at my work. That rules. You know what? I think he, he worked for a um, moving company. I bet okay. you that's what it was. Like he would move furniture, mm-hmm. you know, and then they drive and like take take it out. and then just, Yeah, he just like, showed like, up at my work and he gave me this Lethal Prayer uh, CD. I was like, oh, that how, was a fucking cool meeting. Like, How random is, such is a that? Small huh? world. Such a small world, right? Crazy. I know it was in Johnstown. I went to both of them. Wasn't sure if it was that bar, but thank you, John. Cool. The um, Steve Eggs, no quarters needed, for which wasn't that where Summer Sleaze was held? No, that was... um, uh... Oh, shit. Another remarkable story? No problem. I have plenty of them. (laughs) Um... Yeah, rolling I'm... up with, rolling up with the lethal prayer. Roy, what what show was it where the crowd was chanting along with funerous? What does Jill remember about that show? Crowd seemed really fired up. Which I, show was that? I think it was. Um, Are you, is he talking the one you just videoed? I believe so. I think it was. Um, it was either the in, Indian one or. No, I think it was in this one right here, if I'm not mistaken. That's well, the one, right? Early, that's it's Brazil, early. right? I don't... I don't think so because I don't think Sam played with us in Brazil. Sam's okay. in the video, right? I don't know. It says uh, live in Porto Alegre. Yes, Brazil. Okay. So that's the one. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Definitely sick. Yeah, that was sick. There's a lot of fucking people there. Yeah. Brazil I, is I, sick. Yeah, it, it really is. In Brazil, they just are... Not just Brazil, but I know that there was a lot of people that supported the band, and um, yeah, great cool. shows there. Well, in South America in general, like we had, you know, amazing great shows. But yeah, um, awesome. Yeah. The crowd's really into it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're it's gonna give tough. Jill a break, and then. Um... I'm going to play something here. I think I played a lot of this, but I'm not sure if I played this. If I didn't, you're going to watch it again. How's that sound, guys? <laughs> is this this long? This is this long. So you could take a break, Jill, and then we'll come back and we'll do our little outro, maybe. Okay. All right, cool. I might have played this. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I played that one already. God damn it. Hold on a sec. We need we need fresh meat on here, you know. Fresh meat. We gotta let Jill use the bathroom at the minimum. You know? <laughs> My Lasix <laughs> is kicking in. <laughs> yeah, a little bit maybe. Hold on a sec, though. Let's see here. This is something else. I think this is a different song from. Uh... Just give me one second, guys. Sometimes you gotta cue these things up. Home of technical difficulties. I, I think we bounced back a little bit, though. I had you in the middle of a good Metallica story, too, so. Okay. I was like, God damn. It's like I had her in, in a good spot right there where she was telling me about her Metallica shirts and the uh, gang she hung out with in high school. <laughs> yeah. Did you want to go back to that? No, or... no. I'm just going to play a song and then you can... Uh, oh take a break or something okay hold on a sec okay so there it is and god damn sorry i'm all discombobulated from being screwed up earlier erase erase there we go
I peed and smoked the bullhead at the same time, so I'm pretty <laughs> ambidextrous. <laughs> I peed. I didn't do anything else. <laughs> no, there's no coincidence the band always sounds good live. Total pros. Fuck yeah. What's up, Dan That's Ferguson? Cool. How's it going? That sounds awesome. Yeah, that, that was cool. Thank you. Then, that was... Yeah, it was definitely right. cool. He's always did come across very strong, like, live, you know? Okay. The footage rules, hell yes. Jill, didn't you meet Cliff? I did. Cliff Burton? I did, yeah. Oh, so. 1980, either 85, no, 86, I believe. They actually played in my hometown, which is crazy because oh. our town is like a uh, like couple miles, you know, and like you're out of the. <laughs> no. But. It's a small town, and they uh, that was the Aussie tour. Uh -huh. So um, I was with a bunch of friends, and uh, we were standing, like, in the hallway of where they were staying. Like, they each had their own rooms or whatever. And, like, we went and knocked on the door. Uh, uh -huh. This uh, <laughs> friend of mine, Carl, he knocks on the door. And the door starts to open, and it's Cliff. <laughs> and he has this really pissed off look on his face because he was resting. And we had to be assholes and, like, knock on his door. Anyways, he uh, he opened the door, and then uh, my friend Carl says, uh, Hey, Cliff, give us a pose. And he goes, <laughs> click. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Shit. That's, That's the, still uh, cool, the, though. I mean, yeah. not many people out there could say that they were in the time of Cliff Burton in general, you know? Yeah, sure. I mean... It was a short-lived situation because, um, you know, like, after that Ozzy tour, like, he had not really played around in America anymore. They went on the Euro tour, and then he passed away from that bus right. accident, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, what about, um... We didn't talk about, like... The, when you started getting into like harder music like Slayer or Death or like what about like death metal stuff like what were some of your like earlier death metal standout records um stuff like Dawn of Possession Onward to the Gotha um you know like Possessed um <sighs> Autopsy, um, 
all the best. Yeah. Seven like survival. Yeah, like <laughs> all the all the good um, gems that came out so early on in the early days like that, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like you asked me that question and like now I, I like, boop. Like, well, it's I a general, it's, I mean, people right ask me that question on here in the chat. They're like, hey, Roy, what's your favorite death metal van? I'm like, dude, like, give me a fucking break, bro. Like, I know like a thousand of them, first of all, you know? Sure. Or like, what's your favorite f top five records ever? It's like, like can I know. You put that at a top thousand right you, now. You can't. Yeah, exactly. I was also I was very very influenced by Swedish death metal, like you know, obviously Carnage and um, Entombed and Unleashed, and you know, the list right. goes on and on and on. But yeah. the the like Funerous was. Uh, what's the word um was uh influenced by a lot of swedish death metal right I and, feel and, the carnage and, in there. and stuff like rotrevor was a big influence i feel that that too. band was a huge influence on me i feel that in your whole like area like with Megos and funerus and rotrevor seem like there's a little permeating little feeling of like you know yeah, yeah. So, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, and Mark Mastro is a maestro, basically, you know? Maestro, absolutely. Great taste in music, Jill. Hell yes. Great memories. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I definitely feel blessed that I was born when I was because I got, I got all that as I was growing up, right. which is unfortunate for maybe like the millennial age where it's they didn't grow up with it but they it seems like they want to hear it about now. it though so like that's also why i probably do this show you know what i mean because uh -huh. like there's people that are younger than i that you know watch this and like they want to know about like they want to know about like rochevor shows they want to know about like they want to know about Altars of Madness when it first came out, you know? And, like, the yeah, buzz yeah. that it created around, like, all of us in a way, right? Mm -hmm. or, or early entombed or, you know what I mean? Yes. So it's like, you know, these, these things were super fucking important at the time. And Carcass, you know, like, you know, the first times hearing some of these bands, the like Carcass and Napalm and... You know, then things like the bands all would come to America and do their like grind crusher tours and this and right. that. And Jill is a big show goer, so like you would find yourself probably at many of these shows, either in Ohio or Pittsburgh. Like yeah. I mean, it seemed like you really went to a lot of shows, you know? There was actually shows that I went to by myself. Right I rode out to Pittsburgh or whatever. Uh -huh. And um but like I can remember like days where all of us here from Johnstown, which is like two hours from Pittsburgh, would jump climb in my small Honda Civic. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, we like people there'd be people sitting on people's laps and stuff and just like we all piled in the car and went and you know, it's like good, good times, you know. Yeah, the, you get the crew together. I had that too in uh in Kearney, New Jersey, where I'm from. Uh-huh. So we would get together and like myself and like Bill Venner and like a bunch of fucking freaks and we would sit on each other's lap to try to go see like a Nippon <laughs> Death show right. or right. Yeah, yeah, we did what we had to do, you know. I remember exactly. spinning out, going out to the highway one time. I was with uh, one of my friends, uh, Dan Kincaid was driving and I guess the he his his car was so like rickety. All he was doing, like we didn't even leave the town almost and we were just like hitting on to like 95 to go we were like all like yeah and his car just did a fucking 180 in the middle of the fucking on way and we were Oof. like holy shit what happened you know <laughs> <laughs> and then he just turned the car around and he just started driving straight again and i was like are you gonna go to the show now he's like dude let's go <laughs> I was like, you just did a 180, bro. He's like, I don't know. I might have been going a little too fast. 
I, I got like this mental picture of like all you guys in a car, like all stoned and be like, dude, what just fucking happened? Yeah, it was a Cheech and Chong <laughs> moment, you know, because <laughs> we were facing the opposite direction. And then you saw like a car like pull up in front of you and you're like, kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, I think we just did a 180, dude, you know? Carney, yeah. New Jersey, unrecognized death metal for Mecca, Doom, and Hardcore. It's not unrecognized. You know what? If anything, there's going to be a show on Carney, New Jersey. And I'm going to bring on a bunch of people from my hometown of Carney. So that'll be like, hopefully, Bill from Dizma, Sebastian from Dripping, one of the guys from Evokin, Matt Medeiros uh, from Ruinous, and then, um, you know, maybe we'll get some other random freaks from Carney to come on. Which would be cool because, like, there was, like, so many, like, genesis -y death metal bands that kind of play, you know, were members of Funebrum and this guy and this guy was in Dizma and Incantation and then this guy is in Dripping and now he lives in Florida and, you know, like, no one lives there now, which is funny. And I don't live there now either. Right. Yeah, Sebastian, it would be up in NJ Death Fest. I think I just talked to Sebastian. Sebastian was texting me. He's like, yo, man, you, your screen is black. <laughs> so he's watching He's watching this right now. What's up, Seb? <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah, Funebrarum, because uh, Matt Medeiros was uh, uh, in Ruinous and Funebrarum. Your shirt, Morpheus Descends? Uh-huh. Let Jill know... We want her to perform our sleepover, haha. Ha. <laughs> From to Madison, what? Madison Hunter. She said what? Let Jill know we want her to perform our sleepover. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> me and me and Steve Eggs did a spin out on our way to see SOD, Morbid Angel, and the Ritz at New York City. You see that, like. We just death metal spin outs. So, yeah, I mean, with um, over time, obviously, like death and black metal got like a lot bigger, you know? So, you get into any black metal, Jill? Um, yeah, but it's, I'm way much more of a death metal girl than I am a black metal girl, I have to admit. Okay. But there's some bands like, that I've gotten to know or play with or stuff like that I, I was able to like get into. Right. Um, we, we, we toured with um, uh, Dark Funeral. We did a tour with Rotting Christ, did, you know. Sick. And just like, I guess like, every night here in the, um, you know, the music and stuff, like I would start getting into it a lot more than just like getting a cd and listening to it and demonic christ and... well those bands are no joke i mean you toured with dark funeral and fucking rotting christ you know so yeah yeah we did a full shit, Jill. full um 14 dates in poland on the blitzkrieg tour which was vader's tours okay. and then the, all the opening bands and it was like five bands and it was an amazing bus tour um mm. Yeah, so our like stuff like that. Wow, great, great, great yeah, times good and memories. memories. Good stuff. Yeah. Good. Uh, and Europe has a super good scene, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Super diehard and fans. Something else that's really cool that the states doesn't have is some. A, a lot of the European venues have showers in their, their venues, which. You right. don't see much in the States, you know? And I've even heard that European venues can have, like, where you stay there, too. Okay. Like, you stay at the venue. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, someone's told me that before. I don't know. I'm not in a band, so. Any Czech shows somebody wanted to know? Christine? Just, just uh, Obscene Extreme. Love, Demonic Christ, Dana's a Sweetheart, also good friends with my ex-roommate. Cool. Awesome. Saw some death metal shows in Florida when I lived there from 99 to 2004. What about Florida death metal? You didn't mention anything. As far as bands or playing? Yeah, you like Old Death and Leprosy. Oh, and God, of course. The Obituary Death, uh, Massacre, <laughs> Mantis, um, the oh, whole yeah. gamut as far as Tampa and Florida scene, yeah. 
cool. <clears throat> you ever consider going to like Mora Sound or anything like that with the band? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Does that still exist? Um, Mora it's Sound? starting to again. Sorry, Kristen. Um, yeah, the uh, I used I used the bathroom at Dana's house once. Good for you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Burns, that's what it is. Like he's uh one like somebody like Scott Burns or something, he's getting back into producing again. Gotcha. So I think he did like a new thing and they have a new book out about him. The decibel guys wrote a book or oh, something. Oh, that, that's cool. Yeah. Um I mean I think that if I have things correct, like I think more sound kind of went by the wayside and then like say uh Eric Rutan came in with right his studio and i think a lot of bands started going there right as, as, yeah. so yeah another jersey boy jersey number one right <laughs> ripping corpse yes ripping corpse yeah yeah and many others revenant you know yes yeah definitely new jersey ruled i used I used to go to Mythic Rehearsal in 91, and I probably used Dana's bathroom also. <laughs> Sam from Zadie is my mangoes. I don't know if she's watching, Appreciate it, bro. that's funny. Yeah, she, yeah, Ripping Corpse does kill. That's cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, like, the scene is, like, it's small, but it's big. Because it's like, you show Absolutely. you're in India playing. You know, or there'll be people in the chat even. They're like, hey, I'm here from friggin' Nigeria, you know? I'm like, oh, cool, you know? Or, uh, you know, I'm tuning in from Guatemala. Or there was somebody from the UK that plays in genital deformities was in the chat here. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. I mean, he's like, it's 4 a.m. here. I'm like, yeah, it's cool that you're on the fucking live here, you know? Right. So, I mean, I appreciate... And then uh, the longer I stay on, which I'm not going to keep you forever, but the longer I stay on, the more Europeans start coming on and they're like, good morning, Roy. I see. <laughs> and, then, and I'm just yeah. like, I, you know, I can't stay on here forever. You know what I mean? Would be nice, though. Yeah. Did you ever play in Beer City? I have a hard time remembering. Where's Beer City? Yeah, Jill has a hard time remembering, so... <laughs> So, not a fan of Muddy Sound, generally speaking. They put the nail in the coffin for a lot of albums. Okay. Okay, Cat. I haven't go to bed yet, and it's four a.m. Exactly. Thank you, Cat. Yeah, you're My more like it Madel. for our Death Metal podcast watchers. Because I had uh, the dudes from Finland on here, and it was it was probably pretty late there, and it, like you could see the sun coming up behind a guy. Really? And he's like, I'm like, yo, I could never get anyone to come on. Like, they go to, does everyone go to bed at nine o'clock? He's like, nah, man, they're a bunch of fucking pussies. <laughs> 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 and the other guy was like, well, I, if I wasn't here, I would be at the bar, basically. So he had to like carry his friend home. Okay, Beer City and Milwaukee. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, uh, Milwaukee. Sure. They asked if I ever played in Milwaukee. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Well, we did. Um, we did a uh, Milwaukee Death Fest show. Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah, Metal wouldn't Fest. I wouldn't know what year that was off the top of my head. Um, I can't recall if there was any like just like funeral shows yeah, or anything shows, shows in I'm Milwaukee. Nocturnal but... too. So join the club. This show is nocturnal. <laughs> it, it always is. And it's always like, if we didn't have the break in it, obviously, like, it, it, but sometimes I've been on here very, very, very long, too. But, I mm -hmm. mean, th that's why these guys used to make fun of me. They're like, you did an 11 hour podcast? I'm like, I went across the world, dude. We had Takashi from Anatomy on. Demo was on here from Australia. There was people on here from the UK, and then it felt like we went back around the world again, you know? Yeah. So it's cool stuff. Um, it's cool that the scene is so, like, deep, you know? And deep-rooted, and, so, and also how long-term. It's like some of the bands and the people, like, you think about or you talk about, like, for me, and I'm sure, you know, you could probably name a few, 
Like, I'm like, well, I've known and wrote to Ross for, like, 35 fucking years. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure you have a few people like that, too. Yeah. Um, it's like, I, damn. I, it was... I've known this person for 33 years. Like. Yeah. It's so I... fucking crazy. Yeah, it is. It's It's like to be into this thing for so long and it's like I know a lot of people I knew early on in the in like high school days like kind of as they grew older kind of grew out of it which right. you know is, is a bummer but of course you know whatever people were into they're into but yeah because um, yeah. I used to get that thing like um like walking through the wall, mall with my Metallica shirts and I got and somebody coming up and saying, "Oh, you wearing your boyfriend shirt?" kind of thing. I got mm. that all the time. And I I also used to get uh all the time the um the um oh, it's just a phase. You're mm. just going through a phase. Gotcha. You know, and here I am like <laughs> 35 years later. Well, I went to your still... wedding and I met your parents. Oh. So I did they, would they say that to you? <laughs> Jill? My parents, I put them through so much bless their souls because I tortured my parents. <laughs> I mean, yeah, my, my props to my mom and dad. Cause props to them. they put up with a lot. Yeah. But I my bet. mother, my mother said this one time and I'll never forget. She said this, I don't know, maybe the last, within the last 10 years, she said to me, um, you know, all of these metalhead people that you're friends with, she said, I never met a bad one. That's Not beautiful. at all. Wow. Which that's beautiful. It is. It was like for my mom to say that, like, like she means it. Cause she, she's like, she's like an angel you know yeah. but but she she has met so many of my friends over the years and has nothing bad to say about any of my metalhead friends that's beautiful so, man metalheads are awesome that's yes. why big love and metal coming from there we go the um let's see here though what we didn't talk about this record yep was this this was like the follow up to the early stuff? That was a follow up. That was um, a follow up from Festering Earth. This is uh -huh. reduced to sludge. This was um, Mac, me, and Sam and Zara. Okay. Um, and I'm very proud of this. This was my first release with me on vocals um so it, it's like has a special place in my heart <laughs> nice. so um yeah uh love the artwork dusty peterson um love like the photos on the back it's not like a band photo it's a individual shots mine was in my backyard against the fence um <laughs> So, I mean, the album cover is really sick. I mean, it's it is. Metal as he fun. did. He did a wonderful job. Yes, and and it was one of those things where he said, like, you tell me what you're like envisioning, and then he'll come up with it. Mm. And first, um, so to speak, take of of the the artwork was the masterpiece. I was like, how did you do that? Like it's hard for me to think that like by someone telling you what they want and then they create it and it's dead on what you were thinking, you know? Right. Is there so, like a theme between the festering earth and the reduced by sludge? Is there like a theme to those two things? Mm, <laughs> I mean, I'm not quite sure what that Just means. Mentally. Like, I guess, the similarities would be that, like, I think most of the lyrics I wrote, and I tend to write lyrics that mean something to me personally or experiences that I've had, um, that might be 
the connection between the them, between I the guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hey man, if I if I don't ask, nobody knows. Yeah. So I mean, you know, nobody would know. They just see the lyrics, and, yeah, you know. But I, the two things are both killer releases. And then you had a seven inch yeah. too. Yes. Which was released on uh, Dark Descend Records. Yeah. Which I'm going to show here in a split second. I don't see it uploaded actually. I did. Um, let me see here. Well, this is the cover of it. I could just show the cover. Sorry, guys. I don't. I don't. I don't think I missed uploading it. But this was the cover, the seven inch, right? Something like yes. This. This was obviously a tour poster, but so can you talk to this release, the seven inch on Dark Descent? Sure. Um, so after um, we split with Sam, uh, we were gonna do a um, uh, it's the Neurotic Death Fest in the Netherlands, okay? Uh -huh. So I was given um, Frank. I don't even know if I can say his last name, but Frank Scuparo uh -huh. did um, the fest show with us, and it worked out like amazing with one day of practice between the band. Right. So, um, so then. So then we were gonna write for the seven inch and it was basically Frank and Alvin from Asphyx um, yeah. did guitars. And I guess I, from what I remember, like here at the house, like John and I did what we needed to do. And then it was like, just all kind of mixed so it wasn't like we were together okay and created that it was well things was are like done that that, that yeah that, that yes. way nowadays more than they yeah. have been over the years yeah so that I has think... members of asfix and then it has you and john on it yeah oh that's kind of cool i never knew that Mm hmm. i don't know if the chat yeah. knew that either but that's, that's kind of um, super sick asfix I... is a classic Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it was cool. Um, uh, uh, I forgot what I was getting at, but like, yeah, I, I don't know. My thoughts just went out the it's window. It's all good. Incredible stream. Uh, Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, Jill, it is sick, and I didn't know that either. So, I mean, it's this is what this is what Death Metal Podcast is all about, basically, just to basically, you know, like funifix, <laughs> funery fix, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, this is what the show is about. It's about learning about little little tidbits that nobody knows about, you know. Sure. So, I mean, I want you know definitely to. Um, I hope you know, like, if if anything. It was, you know, talking to you on here is awesome, Jill. This was like a fucking phone call turned into just a video chat that other people could watch. That's you so know. awesome. Does yeah. anyone have any other questions? I saw Jill try to take questions while I was off, which was sweet of her. <laughs> and I could see that she was kind of like, I can't see it quite. Because she was using her phone at that moment, too, you know? Yeah. So does anyone have any questions that we didn't cover? I covered the releases. Jill's early, like... Metallica time. She met Cliff Burton. <laughs> you know, she's been around the world, definitely played uh, many places, recorded some sick shit. Um, we had the messages there from uh, Brad to talk about the early days, which is beautiful. Thank you, Brad. And um, I have to see if I somebody else sent me anything. Ed Farshley had sent me a message, actually. Okay. I could just read it to you. Let me see here. It says, Ed, Ed said, uh, I've known Jill since the earliest days of death metal. She, along with Sharon, Derkada, Mary from Prime Evil, and Frantic Annie were amongst the first girls in our local scene, usually into heavy metal, heavy underground metal. It paved the way for generations to come. 
I've had a pleasure of seeing funerists a few times and booked them myself, including time main support for my sold-out mortician show at St. Vitus in 2019. It was an awesome night, and funerists never sounded better. Jill is always a brutal and captivating front woman. Last time I had the pleasure of seeing Jill was at the final Day of Death uh, Fest in Buffalo a few months back. Even though her health wasn't great, she made she made the trip. Uh, she she wasn't uh, she made the trip to the show her, for her support as always. I'll always love your strength through your adversities. So that's coming from uh, um, Ed Farshley. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, Ed's the man. So this dude is like the coolest guy ever. I know, and I seen him at Metal Threat this past year. I roll okay. up like a gypsy. I'm like, I took a train here. I got a backpack full of whatever. I didn't really, like. I have nowhere to stay. Even the first thing Ed is like, "You need to stay somewhere. You come stay with us, dude." I'm like, "Really?" He, I, I'm like, "Well, I might have somewhere to stay, but dude, thank you, man. Like, I, dude, I, it's just like nice to know. You know what I mean? That like, yeah, my boy from New York and." um you know, and Greg also, they had my back, dude, you know? So I was like, wow, thank you, man. It's cool, man. Yeah, um, Ed is always a pleasure to run into anywhere. Like, he's such, like, that cool, um, kind, definitely metal fuck, um, old guard, you know? I feel like, like he helped get me into it. Because he had a, a fanzine back in the day. It was called Rage of Violence. And I would read that. And that was like sometimes the first place where I had seen some bands that like. Or or he put addresses in there or something. So like to me addresses were like golden you know. Sure. Because then I could write to the band and try to get the stuff that was in the Tape fanzine. Tape trading days. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah. So so Ed and uh, Joe Pupo like they they had a fanzine called Rage of Violence and it was like I remember it had like nuclear assault on the cover or something but uh -huh. they had like death metal inside you know and then yeah. definitely like a catalyst and I, he mentioned Frantic Annie too like she was a catalyst for me too with all her shows and all the things yeah. she did in Jersey South Jersey with uh, G Willikers you know yeah so yeah Love more festering earth. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Jill's thoughts on Arostacron? Acrostacron? Acrostacron. Um, yeah, I uh, mentioned Corinne a little bit ago, I think, in the, earlier in the podcast. But, mm -hmm. um, great, amazing love that the sound, the grittiness, like, I uh, just, Corinne's actually one of, like, the women that I looked up to as my journey began in mm, battle, and, gotcha. um, she's, yeah, a pioneer, and, like, so, yes, I'm familiar with the band. Actually, Larry Gamber is the one that turned me on to Across the Con, um, but, yeah, like, like, even, like, Sharon, like, I looked up to Sharon and then we became like the super close friends and stuff, you yeah. know, it's like, it's amazing. That's beautiful. Like Lori Bravo and, and like, yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, she, she's, they're all innovators and like how people say that I am influencing girls doing this now. That's how I was with those women. Right who were in their innovators in which the is scene. so important you know yeah and there's innovators now you know so like absolutely which is cool yes there's people in the chat you know even like i know like you know like just different male band members and female band members and i'm just like it's cool to see like everyone convert you know conversing and enjoying talking on here talking both of us you know, we could talk about old stories and stupid things we did, you know? Sure. It's fun, you know? It's just... Um, Absolutely. Fly to the Rainbow is a fucking classic. Exactly. <laughs> rainbow is a classic, man. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. 
So, I mean, yeah, I, we're going to wind this down, Jill. I really do appreciate uh, you holding it down while I uh, fucking blanked out here and restarted my <laughs> computer six times. It was pretty bad, Roy. It was getting I know, bad. I'm like, sorry I was, about that. I was getting yeah. all sappy and the stuff. So, well, but no, I, mean, I appreciate what you're doing for me now no because problem. this is, this was amazing. And uh, I, I loved, loved this. Awesome. So thank There's, you. One more question here from Sam Biles. Ask her about her love of Twisted Sister. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. Um, so I was young and I was not into like metal yet. Right. Um, so it started with the, um, the we're not going to take it, which okay that's how a lot of people were turned on yep. to twisted sister i didn't know the background and the you know all the tri-state area thing and all the when they were way 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 underground right. so that was my first um you know experience with twisted sister was the video of course on mtv and yeah i was like fucking into it you know like <laughs> holy fucking a that's great well, then I went backwards and like under the blade, you can't stop rock and roll. Like the holy shit. Yeah. I think like I got to see him a good amount of times. So I, they are, I believe one of the absolute best live bands ever. Um, they bring it like every night. Like if say, um, you know, Mark Mendoza had a uh, knee pain or something, you'd never be able to tell because they would never ever ever let some their fans uh see that there was something going on behind the scenes or what right. have you but it's just the i just got so into twisted sister like so much i was like consumed by this band <laughs> You're like, oh shit, they're playing five shows from here to there. I'm going to all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well those those were days that like I was even too young to go to shows. Like I live two hours from Pittsburgh. Right. I remember they played Pittsburgh and I was like so upset like I wasn't allowed to go because I right. would have been only like thirteen ish, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was no way I was allowed to go. So like i remember like being the most bummed out like i've ever been because they played two hours from where i was and i couldn't be there and stuff so but i i just there's just something about that band that i love so much and then and, as time goes on you're like ha ha i can go see them now mom and then like you're like, yeah, I see them <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 16 yeah. times <laughs> in other states yeah yes but, um I, I mean, my parents could probably tell you the names of the band members. That's how much, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, like, uh, I just, yeah, I, and I have since got to, um, meet, I saw, uh, D I met at a, like a convention thing. He was just there meet and greet people. Right, right. And I got to, um, I got to meet him. He was, it. I was in the wheelchair and my husband was pushing me around because there was a lot of walking. Right. So I'm there in the front, like kind of just watching all, the whole line, the whole way down the hall uh, against the wall. And he was about to take a, a lunch break and his uh, management and, and his people were there. And immediately this, gentleman came over to me and said did you want to meet d and i was like well fuck yeah right. <laughs> and he he's had me come over and wait on on the side of the stage thing hmm. and d came down and came right to me and was immediately like the coolest guy ever nice. to me so that's good memories and i also have this real quick story that's amazing um uh, we went to see Twisted Sister. It was the very last U.S. date they ever played, which was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
Okay. Um, I'm sure you know um, Sam from Chicago, yeah. and she takes her sons to all yeah, the shows Tammy. and they meet everybody. Yes, Tammy. And um, so it was it was her and I and her son, and so we got the special passes or whatever to get a picture with them. And um, so, anyways, I went down and I stood in front of them and they took the picture and I turn around and I said, because I wanted like, I wanted Twisted Sister to know like, like I'm in the know as far as Twisted Sister goes, if that Uh, makes sense. So I said to them, I am, I'm me, just obviously one of their songs that's amazing and um, is very appropriate for metalheads, I believe. So, um, so D says to me, we're going to play it. I'm like, Mm. awesome. Kick ass. Awesome. So, okay. Done with the meet and greet. Here's the show. We're watching the show up in the balcony and doesn't D Snyder on stage say, this one goes out to the girl with the purple hair. (laughs) And he was like looking through the audience, but I was way up here in the, um, in the balcony and he yeah there was no like flagging him down it was like you, up here. basically so anyways that was like a very special um special medalist fuck honor <laughs> That's for awesome. me you know to get yeah, a shout out awesome. from twisted sister yeah especially even though the, it wasn't my name last tour date in the u.s and all that and in south dakota so obviously you are die hard to go out there mm, to even yeah, go to that. yeah that's cool yep then I we got, got to a see them at that Twisted Sister fan in the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to see them also when they did the, they reunited after 9/11 and I think it was like a something steel fest or something uh-huh. and they played there and I was at that show as well so um very nice. Yeah. Super cool, yeah. man. Good memories. Absolutely good memories. I was smoking a joint with Lloyd Kaufman in my car, and his phone rings. He said, hold on, I got to take a call. It was D from Twisted Sister, says Steve Eggs. Cool, Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Saw Twisted Sister in 2003. It was a great show. Cool, man. Wait a second. D. Schneider did a movie here. Houston did a part in Sound Exchange in Houston. Cool. Awesome. That's awesome. D. Schneider could easily wreck anyone in Man of War easily. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to wind it down now. Um, Jill, you have been an awesome guest. Uh, I hope everybody that's been watching Death Metal Podcast tonight will subscribe and like the channel and all that stuff. So that way the show gets out to more people. will be able to see it. We're just going to leave it in with the big fuck up and everything. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I have to uh, give it to Jill for being a trooper and talking about all the old past stuff. And, you know, just you're just a genuine person. And I, we, we all appreciate you and love you, basically. And I think the chat really shows, like, we, we fucking love you, basically, you know? Wow. Yeah, you've, re- you've done something, you know, you're... Your smile, your uh, like, you know, the feelings that you give people is good, which is great, you know. So you're a very positive and uplifting person, and so you, you brought that to a lot of people. So Thank like, everybody wants to bring the love back to you too. Um, I mean, again, the whole camaraderie with the metal scene. I feel it so much. I feel it when I talk to people at shows, and I you know people after they saw us play you know come and talk to you and it's like i'm nobody special i i'm just me and like how metallica used to say back in the day we're just music fans making music for fans and stuff or whatever that was but i i'm a people person even though this world's getting worse and worse as we go. <laughs> right. It's like, I am a people person and I love making people feel good about themselves and, and, and people deserve kindness. 
it's contagious. And they're going to get it from me. It can, <laughs> can be contagious. So, you know, that's good. Yes. And in a way, like you, you talking to like a fan when they get off the stage, you know, and they're like, hey, that was a good show. And like you actually making time to talk to them. And you know what I mean? Like it, it, it goes so far with them. It goes as far as the D. Snyder thing right now that you just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they'll remember that, you know, and, and I have memories like that too from certain things. So it's like, sure. that stuff sticks with you for your entire life. And it's even uh-huh. stuff that you like start to tell your kids about and everything, you know, you, <laughs> you're telling your mother-in-law some story about like, you know, like, eh, you know, like I was like with D Schneider, you know, <laughs> but you know, so like, it's yes. just cool. Yes. Thank so, you yes. so much. Tell Jill, everyone saying, tell Jill uh, hi from Carl and Yvonne in Texas. Um, spreading kindness makes a huge difference in the world, definitely, 100%. Hails, uh, some hearts for you. I love you, Jill, from uh, Jordi Rodriguez. Uh huh. Most Jordan. beautiful, genuine human being, says Madison Hunter. Great show, Evan March for Roy and Jill. Love you, Jill. Matt Anthony, very appreciated honor for your friendship. Hi, Matt. Much love from Kat to Jill. Thank you, Kat. Yeah. Amazing show, says Sam Biles. Congrats, Roy, for doing this. Jill rules and is a very special person. I thought so, too, and... You know, we talked about it, and I talked about it actually with Barry before I talked about it with you. And I said to Barry, um, I called him one night, and I said, you know what? I said, um, I think I would like to have Jill come on the live stream. So before we talked about it, and I showed you the videos and all this stuff, me and Barry, we talked about it, and he's like, he's like, Jill's a little nervous to do it. I could kind of get the vibe that she might feel nervous doing this. And I said, I think if she does it with me, that she won't feel as nervous because, you know, like we can talk and it's just very, uh, the conversation flowed very naturally, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So thank you to uh, Barry to appreciate it. You know, did you get a piece of that cheesecake, Barry? Um, Love you, Jill. (laughs) Uh, Samuel Romeo. James Capson hails Jill and Roy. Cheers and have a happy holiday. Yeah. Happy holiday to everybody, man. Yes, Merry Christmas, yeah, everyone. Dan from Ohio, love you too, Roy. Oh, Dan, Dan bless <laughs> sure. you, Dan. Thank you, Chris from. Uh, um, de- uh, I wanted to say Denmark because you put D E, but it's probably uh, Delaware. Uh, Stephen oh, Goldberg, uh, hails Jill. It was a pleasure having you on tonight. Love you, Jill. You're the best. Benji saying, Jill and Roy, thanks for coming and sharing awesome stories. I first heard Funerous about a year ago from Francisco show. You're an awesome vocalist and bass player. Hales. You real you rule, Jill. Remember seeing you here in Chile in two thousand seven. Funerous rules. Love you, Jill. Coming from Skip from Headrot. So yeah, everybody, you know. It's a big love fest on here. Yes. Chris Gamble <laughs> saying Syrian salutes. Kristen saying love you, Merry Christmas, Blunt Skull. Love you too, Kristen. Yeah. Um Matt Anthony. Alyssa Lisa Lisan. I guess maybe yes. we were Yep. Is that your sister in law? No, that's my husband's daughter. Oh, your husband's daughter. Yeah. Big love to you too. She's amazing. Um, Lemmy they all are. from NRW. Wish you guys dear brother and cheers from Germany. Cheers. <laughs> Brian, thank you. Uh, Kyle Messek, thank you. Happy holiday to you and your family. Thank you, Kyle. Yes. You and Bonka have an amazing Christmas, I hope. Everybody, I appreciate you, Paul, uh, Pal Kimball, for the comments. Very cool. So this has been another episode of Death Metal Podcast. And again, we had Jill from Funerous. I think we pretty much covered a lot of the history of the band. And we got a little emotional and... I think, you know, maybe, you know, it helps break tensions. And I think you said some things on here, maybe when I wasn't on, that basically were things you told me, but you might have wanted to get them out. And I think you kind of got them out in a weird way, which might right. help, you know, in the long picture. Yeah. So definitely, you know, everyone appreciates uh, Alex saying he loves you. Alex uh, Books? Yep. Alex Books. 
Alex, I miss you so much. <laughs> Great show coming from Aaron from Goat Throne, Zulema, Zulema, uh, everybody, man. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas from Brian from Terror. So, um, so we're gonna wind Thank this you, up, Brian. and you could stay on for a sec, Jill. And then, uh, so this has been another episode of Death Metal Podcast. Tune in and um, hit like and all that stuff. Leave comments afterwards. Tell Jill who your favorite bands are. Talk about Twisted Sister. That way more people can see the show. Because if there's more comments and likes and talking in the comments, then hundreds and thousands of more people will see Jill. So, and me. <laughs> One real episode. Kristen says, call her 24-7. You got my number. So, all right. So this is it, though. I'll see you guys around. We Thank love you, Roy. Joe. Much love Stay to on. you. Stay Thank on for you. a second. I'm just going to end okay. the stream. So we're out of here with Death Metal Podcast on Saturday night with one of the best guests I ever had on here. Always brutal. That's right. And then we're out of here, though. So let me put up my generic death metal podcast goodbye banner. Thank you for everybody for tuning in and sticking around through the, um, and coming back through the, uh, internet outage. We appreciate you later.